हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर रघु नागराज सीनियर कंसल्टेंट ऑर्थोपेडिक सर्जन एट फोर्टिस हॉस्पिटल कनिंग एम रोड आई एम हेयर टू टॉक अबाउट द कार्टलेज इंजरीज ऑफ द नी जॉइंट कार्टलेज इंजरीज अकाउंट्स फॉर ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द ओवरऑल इंजरीज ऑफ द नी जॉइंट कार्टलेज इज अ टफ बट वेरी मच एलास्टिक एंड फ्लेक्सीबल स्ट्रक्चर द फंक्शन ऑफ द कार्टलेज इज टू रिड्यूस द फ्रिक्शन बिटवीन द बोन्स एंड हेल्प इन टेकिंग द लोड ऑन द जॉइंट्स it also serves as a mold on the bones end so that they glide against each other very much smoothly so how does the cartilage damage cartilage damages usually happens due to injuries like in sports injuries or in road traffic accidents cartilage injuries can also happen due to the overuse which can lead to the wear and tear and it also can be lead to the age related wear and tear as well so what are all the symptoms of cartilage damage so whenever the patient sustains an injury to the knee joint and an injury to the cartilage they will have the pain swelling and stiffness and reduced movements of the knee joint sometimes if the cartilage damage is more and if it becomes loose within the joint it can also lead to locking symptoms in the joint so how do we diagnose that so when the patient comes to opd with these symptoms pain swelling and all we usually we do an x ray x ray will give us a basic idea about the injury and then we will subject them to the mri scan to assess the location of the cartilage damage and also the severity of the damage mri give us the assessment of the cartilage damage so what are all the treatment options available for the cartilage damage if the damage is relatively minor like in sprain or a grade 1 or a grade 2 damage we treat them with rest and brace support to the knee joint to avoid further injury and once the acute phase subsides we will subject them to the rehabilitation program so with the rehabilitation and physiotherapy they regain back their movements and slowly the strength as well so once the strength is good they can get back to their normal day to day activities and also sports activities with time sometimes the damage will be more like grade 3 cartilage damage that times surgical options is the only available option because cartilage lacks blood supply so the healing capacity of the cartilage is very poor in grade 3 injuries so what are all the surgical options available for the cartilage injuries the first option is usually an arthroscopy a minimally invasive keyhole surgery of the knee joint and it is usually done for injuries less than 1 square centimeter area of cartilage damage so what do we do that in arthroscopy is we'll make a small keyhole past the camera looking in the camera we'll clean up the dead fragments and remove the loose debris in the thing what we call as an abrasion chondroplasty with that the smoothness is uh, regain back and the patient will be normal the other option available for if the patient the area of diameter uh, the damage is around 1 square centimeter is marrow stimulation techniques in this is also done with the arthroscopy and keyhole technique so in arthroscopy we make a small holes into the defect of the cartilage so that the blood and the bone marrow cells come into the area and re- regrow into the cartilage this is a marrow stimulation technique and both the techniques are subsequently treated with the physiotherapy and rehabilitation the other technique is prp and stem cell injection usually this is used as an adjunct to the first two techniques of chondroplasty and microfracturing technique if the area of the damage is little more around 2.5 to 3 square centimeter up to 4 and 1/2 5 square centimeter the options that we are left with is cartilage replacement so there are two options available in this one is an arthroscopic mosaic plasty or oats in this is also a keyhole surgery technique where we will make a small keyhole and take the cartilage from the non weight bearing area here so mainly the person loads the weight in this central part of the knee joint the body weight goes into the center load bearing area so when there is a damage in the load bearing area we make a small keyhole pass the camera and take a small cylindrical plex of the cartilage from the side of the knee joint what we call as a non weight bearing area and replace it into the weight bearing area where the body weight goes this is called mosaicplasty so up to 2 and 1/2 3 square cm area of damage can be dealt with this orthoscopic mosaicplasty if the area of the damage is more close to 3 and 1/2 to 4 square cm then what we suggest is to go for 
autologous chondrocyte implantation. This is basically a two-stage technique. The first stage we do an orthoscopy and take a small cartilage sample from the non-weight bearing area and send it to the lab. So the lab will culture that cartilage, grow the cartilage and send us back in three to six weeks time. After six weeks when the cartilage cells are ready, then we conduct a second stage which is definitive procedure. This is usually done with an open technique. We make a small opening on the area where the damage is there and implant this cartilage cells into the defect. By six weeks to eight weeks, the cells will grow into a normal proper hyaline cartilage of the knee joint. This is a very good technique as it grows into a normal cartilage and a huge large area can be covered with this technique. Once the surgery is done, very next day the patient will be made to bend their knees and put them on machine called CPM. So this will help in getting the movements back and also to mold the cartilage cells that we have implanted. Once the movements are regained in six weeks time, then we will start with the strengthening program. The patient will be a non-weight bearing with a walker for three weeks and then graduated partial weight bearing for another three weeks. After six weeks, the patient will be made to bear weight completely on their leg by three to three and a half months the strength will be sufficient enough to start running and jogging exercises and by six to seven months they can resume back their sports activities so this kind of treatment will help in reducing the development of arthritis and further complications because of the arthritis thank you Middle femoral condyle, the thigh bone. So you can see this part of the cartilage is uh, normal, but here you can see the defect. You can see the boundaries of the defect. So this defect is around almost four to five centimeter in both the transverse and in the AP diameter. So normally the bone should be covered by this uh, kind of cartilage here, like how we are seeing here, the white one. But here this part is missing and if you see this when we make the leg slide that's the area where your body weight goes so that's where we are going to implant the cartilage come on sir can you see this thing mm -hmm. yeah okay so that's the autologous chondrocyte implantation you can see the cartilage cells has been implanted into the defect now this pinkish layer so it is going to grow into the normal cartilage bearing three months after.